Hello again, everybody. Um, this is our last and final session of the day where we're going to talk about our audio video or home entertainment uh, program. Uh, again, many of you have been on here, so uh, this is kind of review, but of course I'm Christine. For those of you that are logging in that are new, um, all of my contact information is there underneath the picture. Uh, you're able to contact me by phone or by email. Uh, we do have Larry Benjamin here today. He is our master trainer. He's going to go over many of our or all of our slides, and he's going to leave some time at the end to answer any questions that you may have. Um, to bring you up to speed, the home entertainment is one of our newest programs. Um, even newer than that, we have energy management. Uh, we're following the trend of the nation and really providing ways to reduce your carbon footprint ways that you can have alternative forms of energy, um, ways to, you know, as an individual, reduce your energy usage through energy management. Uh, this is, runs the same way as many of your other programs, to where we have an interactive board, student workstations, curriculum is done for you, you have the means of assessment and the activities that are provided there. So that's something that you can get with your account manager and, and check out if you're interested. Um, and we're just, you know, we thank you for, for sticking with us or joining us today. And without further ado, I'll turn it over to Larry for audio video. Hey guys, thanks for, thanks for coming back. Thanks for hanging in all day here. I sure do appreciate it. We're covering our audio, video, and home entertainment systems here. This curriculum is really hot because it hits some of the keynotes um, in the industry today. We address multi-room audio, single source multi-room audio. That means we have one source of music playing, one source of sound coming out, but we can hear it in multiple areas in either the home or the business, the dental office or, or wherever, but it's a single source of music. We're going to discuss later on multi-source, multi-room, etc. But, but this is built primarily around a single source of sound of audio that's being uh, distributed throughout the, the home or the business. We also discuss surround sound with regards to home theater. Now home theater is essentially really good sound with a video component added. So in this curriculum we're talking about two distinct types of coverage. We're talking about single source stereo sound being broadcast to multiple areas in the house or building and then we're talking about 5.1 surround sound, which replicates the sound stage for, for home theater. The students are going to be well equipped to converse intelligently and productively in these two areas. You ever go into one of the big box stores and talk to a salesperson you feel knows less about these products than you do? Well, your students would be able to solve that problem for the company. Incredible opportunity for individuals with this skill set. Um, everybody is interested in, in spending more time at home because sometimes the people you meet in public are just too obnoxious. You go to a theater and they're, they're talking and they've got their cell phones on and they're explaining the plot and they're spilling drinks down the back of your neck. So everybody is interested in having that quality theater experience at home and that's one of the things that we address in this particular curriculum. It's all developed with industry standards. We're not just teaching out of the C-type box. It's all built with industry standards in mind, and there are a lot of standards out there that we address. The skill sets that your students have are outlined on this, this uh, document right here. As with all of the skill sets that we've been discussing uh, earlier today, they're available in your instructor manual. And even better than that, they're pertinent to the industry. So your students, if they have this skill set, they're going to be able to compete effectively against the competition for the job. Okay. The equipment that we provide for you is, again, this is the persistent equipment that you would have that stays with the school. There is the uh, home entertainment board in the back, which is like the ITV, except we have this specifically designed for this curriculum. More on that later. 
we have the 5.1 surround sound system with uh, the AVR, audio video receiver, and a DVD player. Remote controls are also included because remote control is one of the things that we cover. Um, the video component, we do have a video display incorporated on your home entertainment board there. And also we have the instructor manual and the student manual. The instructor manual is the student manual on steroids. You get it because it has all of the answers and, and all of the supplements that uh, your students shouldn't be made privy to. The student workstation looks like this. Uh, again, it's tools and your workstation in a box. It's intended to have two students working cooperatively with one workstation. You'll see this, the industry recognized tools there, the uh, volt ohm, ohm meter, the uh, audio pressure level device measures uh, sound intensity, and the uh, telecommunications board. Uh, more on that later. The student consumable outlined on the right there is the manual, the card, the CD-ROM, the safety glasses, and all the cable and wires required to perform the constructions outlined in this curriculum. Here's the connectivity board right here. We have a variety of different industry standard termination methods there where you can connect speaker wire to it. We have uh, spring terminals, we have binding posts, uh, and we also have the modular plug type connector. It's a different modular plug than in the four-pair UTP, but it exhibits all the characteristics of a modular plug, making or breaking connections of multiple contacts at one time. Those are the little green uh, connectors there under the module block. You also will recognize from copper the 103 block, which is an RJ45 modular jack where we can terminate a four-pair UTP cable using 110 punch-down technology. This type of connection is used in multi-room audio um, to exploit the functionality of what's referred to as the A-bus distribution method. More on that in just a minute. We also discussed the principles of sound. Um, because we're not just dealing with the electronics of sound, how do we get stuff from the microphone to the speaker, we have to consider what happens with it once it leaves the speaker and, and before it reaches the human ear. Uh, this is really important, not so much in multi-room stereo, but in, when we develop the sound stage, uh, your ears give you the only other information about the movie other than your eyes. If you were to close your eyes, you should be able to replicate in your head the exact location and everything that's going on in the location called the sound stage of the recording. We use that by exploring and exploiting the three... three areas of psychoacoustic hearing. Boy, didn't that sound fancy? Psychoacoustic hearing addresses the spectral component of hearing, the temporal component, and the spatial component of hearing. Just as a thumbnail sketch, spectral tells us what it is. If I jingle a set of keys, because you've heard keys before, your brain will say, oh, that's a set of keys. That's the spectral component. Spatial is well, I hear those keys, and because I have two ears and I hear in stereo, I can locate those keys. If I had my eyes closed, I could point to where the keys were jingling. Then temporal. Temporal is often a, a considered a misnomer because temporal, we all know, deals with time. But if spectral tells you what it is and spatial tells you where it is, temporal tells you all about the environment in which you are. For example, if we were in a very closed room and I clapped my hands, you would be able to tell because the sound went out and reflected off the walls in a very short period of time that you were in a very small space. If I did that in the Grand Canyon, clapped my hands, and then you heard the, uh, the reflected sound, you would be able to say, geez, that took a long time. I must now be in a very large space. So temporal, the temporal component, since it's composed and controlled in the sound stage, helps you feel where you are. You know what's, what the sound is, you know where it is, but because of the temporal component, you know all about your surroundings. That's really important in uh, developing a sound stage. We also, with principles of sound, discuss why our hear, ears hear certain things better than other things. 
we discuss uh, loud to soft for volume, and we discuss low frequencies to high frequencies with regards to our ability to hear different frequencies of sound. To exploit that more fully, we have what's referred to as a frequency generator on the board. We're going to discuss that a little bit more later, but what that does is that gives us a, a full range of frequencies from low frequencies to high frequencies and a full range of volumes. And we can evaluate our ability to perceive those frequencies and volumes uh, with regards to a single source, a speaker. The electronics of sound is something that we also cover. Uh, because this is cross-curricular, we start covering a little bit of math. Those of you that know ohms have come to know and, and hate him just as much as I do. Okay, here's Ohm's Law. We talk about resistance, etc. We discuss, I'm sorry, we discuss resistive networks, active networks, able to calculate formulas like this, but not only do you understand this, but you're able to see how it relates to what everybody's concerned with regards to their, their music system, and that is power. Ever wonder how the tall, the small, I'm sorry, the high frequencies go to the small speakers, the tweeters, and the low frequencies go to the big speakers, the woofers? Well, we show you how that works in the crossover for a crossover network. This device, and we have two of them in the instructor kit, will show you how passing the same sound through a capacitor will yield the low sections, and, and through a coil or transformer will yield the high sections. So it's... This is how you get the high frequencies to the tweeters and the low frequencies to the woofers. Power. That's what everybody's interested in. Just drive by and stop at a, at a street light with some young buck in his, in his car and his speakers turned way up and, and you thinking, how can he even survive inside that car? It's too loud. Well, we talk about something called root mean square, the RMS. We, we, in this technology, refer to root mean square as 50% of the power. Now, that may seem odd because most people will consider root mean square, I know I did until I came to this technology, as about 0.7 of the power. That's for a single frequency. So root mean square in the, in the environment in which we're considering it with multiple frequencies is referred to as about 50% of the actual power. Why is this important? Because this is the power rating at which your amplifier can function 24 hours a day without even working up a sweat. We covered this more extensively in the curriculum. Since we're talking about multi-room audio, we have to define some of the things that we refer to in the house here. So rooms kind of a misnomer here because we refer to them as zones. Now, you may have a, a bedroom zone, a master bedroom zone, and a master bathroom zone, and recognize that those may be two rooms but one zone, or one room and two zones. They're managed a little bit differently. So zones are, are where we want our sound to, to emanate from. We have single source because we're having one source of music broadcast throughout multiple areas in the house. If we had multi-source, you could choose Bach in the bedroom and rock in the kitchen. However you wanted to do it, you could have multiple sources being broadcast to different areas in the house. We also have a hybrid system. Hybrid system is where you might be able to walk into one room and, and dock your iPod into a, a dock on the wall and play music from your iPod in that particular room. This looks a little confusing, huh? This is how we could use our AVR, our audio video receiver, and we could pass it through our first type of distribution device, or our second type actually, which is the systems matching module, and distribute that sound, that source, through a volume control in each zone to the speakers in each zone. Volume controls and speakers, there's got to be one volume control and at least two speakers for stereo in each zone. Once we get through the passive distribution system and the systems matching component of it, we get into the A-Bus distribution. A-Bus distribution is what we refer to as POE, power over Ethernet. 
And you'll see up there the four pair UTP configuration of T568A. Well, this is the configuration they use for high-end audio in, in the home. Instead of using speaker wire to distribute an amplified signal from the amplifier to all of the different rooms through the volume controls to the speakers, this system is a little bit different. It will take line level or source level voltage, you know, an unamplified voltage, and distribute it over four pair UTP cable to a volume control and speakers in the room. At the volume control is where the amplification takes place. From the volume control to the speaker, you're going to use speaker wire. From the device to the volume control, you'll use four pair uh, UTP cable and source level connections. Ever wonder where you want to put your speakers to get the best effect for your home theater? Well, this is the first thing that you're going to start with. It's called the, Q, the Q3, or the quarter thirds method of speaker orientation. This is a formula that we discuss in the curriculum that helps you align your speakers, not only with regards to their horizontal location, but if given an option, your vertical location, and also just locations in your ceiling as well. You may notice uh, on the top one here we have the tweeter. It looks like it's on the upper part of the speaker system, generally. That's where it would be. But we, more importantly, we have the speaker or the, the tweeter in line with the person's ears in a seated environment. That's because the high frequencies are more laser-like. They don't broadcast and deform into a, in a universal, and I'm sorry, into a multi-directional presentation as well as the low frequencies do. So it's very important that the speakers be right in line with your ears. That's really important in home theater. We also discuss in this curriculum whether or not you have a hard or a soft environment, a live or a dead room. You may be familiar with this terminology. If, if the room has a lot of reflective surfaces in it, hard reflective surfaces, tile floors, mirrors, glass walls, etc., we call that a live room. If it's got a lot of overstuffed upholstery in it, carpets, curtains, and the like, we consider that a soft or a dead room. And because they affect the sound that's being propagated in a different fashion, we have to place the speakers in different locations to maximize their effect. The closer they sit, the brighter they get. With regards to the home theater, I'm, sh I'm sure if you've got into a big box store, and you've sat down at the display and you've listened to that 5.1 or 7.1 surround sound with the big screen TV, and you sit down in those soft chairs, and you listen to it, and you say, this is incredible. I've never, I've never heard anything like this before. You buy that system, and you take it home, you take it out of the box, you settle into your chair, you turn it on, and say, well, wait a second. It doesn't sound like it did in the store. What happened? Well, nothing happened to the equipment. Everything happened to the way that it's being presented in the room, the speaker placement, the calibration of the speakers, etc. We discuss... We, or you will be discussing with your students the difference between a 5.1, a 7.1, a 5.2, a 7.2, or a 5.3, etc. But we'll also discuss the best placement for your speakers with regards to the room in which you're going to be listening. Not all home theaters are the same. We'll help you calibrate or show your students how to help their customers calibrate their speakers so that they get absolutely uh, high fidelity replication of the sound stage. With regards to the home theater, we're talking about a 5.1. Well, the point 0.1 is one subwoofer. That's the low frequency effect speaker. We're not, we're not so much concerned about the, the frequency of the sound coming out of there as we are with the thump of the sound coming out of here. This is the low frequency effect. So if you have one subwoofer, that's a 5.1 system. If you have two subwoofers, we all know that two is better than one, right? But why is it better? And that's what these diagrams will help show you. It will help to, to, to demonstrate that in a 5.2 system, people sitting right next to each other in the optimal listening environment will hear almost essentially the same things, whereas with a 5.1, they may be hearing different volumes of the low-frequency effect. Hmm. 
more on that later if you come, come to class. The video systems. Again, you go into a big box store and they say, well, you know, what do you want? You want a, one of those old-fashioned projection TVs? You want an LCD? You want a LED DLP plasma? You are one of those CRTs, cathode ray tubes? Well, we're going to tell you what all of those things mean. Your students will be able to now intelligently converse not only with those salespeople to make a good decision, but also with their potential customers to help them make good decisions based on their requirements and their needs. We discuss definition, color, and contrast, and the red, green, blue components of uh, the pixels, and what all of that means, 1080i, 1080p, 720i, etc. As well as the different types of video displays, there's different methods of connecting them to your uh, devices. We cover component, composite, or composite, HDMI, high definition media interface, S video, RCA, etc. And even Cat5, UTP, and also fiber optics components. This is one of the areas where we use fiber optics. High end home audio is one of the areas where we use fiber optics media to go from your source to your AVR. All of this requires the ability to connect and the ability to troubleshoot. Testing and troubleshooting is the key here. Because it doesn't sound like it did when you brought it out of the, out of the box and it doesn't sound like you did, it did in the store, you want to find out what the problem was. Maybe it's hooked up incorrectly. Maybe the polarity is one. Well, the students will be able to go step by step through this testing and troubleshooting and even the way to start the system up. How do you start a system up for the first time? They'll be able to calibrate the system and the devices and make sure that it's functioning properly. Everybody likes to get something that's functioning properly, especially once they've paid for it. With the audio trainer, the board there, it's divided into three areas, horizontal areas. And you may see that across the top, we have the outdoor living space, and then we have zone systems, and then below that we have the home theater. Well, the outdoor living space is a part, is a area where we have multi-room audio distributed through a passive distribution device. It's amplified signal delivered through, in essence, a, a, a switch. Then we have the systems matching device, which is part of the zone of systems. That distributes amplified signals throughout the home, but it matches the impedance automatically. We don't have to do that uh, as we would in the passive system. Also included in the zone system is the A-Bus technology, where we distribute unamplified signal through four-pair UTP cable out to volume controls in the environment, and then from the volume control, the amplified signal is broadcast out to the speakers. Four-pair UTP, or power over Ethernet, is an interesting component here because it allows several things to happen. Not only are we distributing unamplified signal, which is more efficient, but it provides an opportunity for us to have a return channel for remote control that's being uh, sent or emitted in a room that might be upstairs and rebroadcast through the four pair UTP cable to a device uh, through the A bus technology. That allows me to use infrared remote control to control a device without being in its line of sight. That's really cool. Also below that we then have the home theater components You'll see between the home theater components and the uh, video display there to the bottom, the frequency generator. We're, we're able to show a volume in uh, a bar meter, and we're also able to show frequencies with a numerical uh, display. The outdoor zone, as I, as I mentioned before, this is a way to distribute amplified signal from one area through that passive system into a volume control that has to be set with the number of rooms or number of zones in the house. If the zones change, we have to make changes to that volume control. The next one is the systems matching zone, and that is where we have an amplified signal being broadcast to a volume control and speakers, multiple zones, but the power going out to each zone is being matched by that white box, the systems matching module. 
That means once the system has been installed, we don't have to go back and make any changes to the volume controls. Then we have the A-Bus technology, as I covered uh, in a little bit of depth here. It's a broadcast of unamplified signal that we bring into the device through the red and white RCA plugs in the bottom left of that uh, distribution device and broadcast it out through four pair UTP, either terminated with modular plugs or punched it down on the 110 punch down connecting blocks. That's distributed out to the volume control either on uh, with four pair UTP cable either on modular jacks or 110 termination and then that amplifier in the volume control sends amplified signals out to the speaker. That's the A-Bus technology. That's, that's the thing of uh, the current day. That's all the rage. Home theater. Um, we have uh, the capacity for a 7.1 surround sound system being connected to that large white faceplate there. And then the back of that large white faceplate is represented by the white faceplate above it with the green modular plugs. That's where we would connect the cables going out to our speakers, the infrastructure for our home theater. In this example, we're showing that in our, our typical O1 package, we could have two students using their uh, connectivity board and be run running one set of speakers, one speaker into each of the connectivity boards and have five sets of students or ten students connected to our AVR and be able to run signal through our connectivity board if it's properly connected. That's just a little bit of what we can do with home theater, but as with most things, uh, you, you don't really get the full import of it. If we had done this in 5.1, yeah, you would have gotten the full import, but no, we just had to do it in stereo and go to meeting or something like that. So to get the full effect, you have to show up for training and then show it to your students. That's where the life gets breathed into the object. So thank you very much for your attention, and I guess we're ready for some questions. We do have questions. Um, one question that came in says, this program looks like it fits into electronics more than networking. Suggestion? Yes, it does. It fits in so many places. Uh, uh, but electronics is great because we actually do the calculations, Ohm's Law and all of that jazz, show resistance, and, and how it goes through the speakers and the like. But uh, any place you want to put some, some buzz into your curriculum, this would be a great, a great opportunity to introduce the home entertainment and, and home theater stuff because everybody appreciates the sound. So. Um, oh. no, that one's good. We're trying to navigate to the questions here. Hang on a second. Uh, another one is it says, is it true I can either make a patch cord or punch down on the A bus to make connections? Yes, it is. Uh, you would use one, but not both. You could use, if you punch down on the A-frame, I'm sorry, on the 110, let's see if we can go back to that slide with the 110, I'm sorry, the A-bus connector. And now we're trying to navigate back to that slide. Keep going, a couple more. We're going to get there to demonstrate your question. Right there, oh, back up. Okay, right there, on the A-Bus distribution device, you'll see across the top of there, you'll, you'll notice the 110 connecting blocks. There'll be a 110 connecting block for room one, as well as a modular plug, an RJ45 modular plug for room one, or for zone one. And there'll be one for zone two next to that, zone three next to that. So you could punch down your four-pair UTP, if you're using it on infrastructure cable, and punch it down on a 110 connecting block. At the volume control, on the, uh, the board, you'll see it where the blue cable goes into the board. There's a volume control there. On the back of that volume control, there will be a 110 connecting block and or RJ45 modular plug. Depending on your expertise, if you can only manage modular plug patch cables, you can, you can use this technology by plugging in RJ45s. If you're proficient, as our students are, in punching down 110, technology, then you can punch down your infrastructure on this distribution device and also on the volume control. From the volume control to your speakers, 
it's distributed uh, over speaker wire. That's because the amplification in this system takes place at each volume control in the room where the volume control resides. You see over here on your A bus, you have a source over here where the left and right stereo can go in, the red and white stereo can go in there. That's pretty cool because that's unamplified signal. You can take a CD player, a phonograph, yeah, a turntable, you remember those, or an iPod jack or whatever, and plug that into this device and distribute stereo, unamplified stereo. So you don't need an AVR to use this technology. If you decide that four zones are not enough, you can take the expansion port here, take a, a signal out of your expansion port, get another A bus device and bring it into the system's end of your second A bus and just broadcast this like a web, like hubs on a web network and broadcast your signal from one to the other. When using a DTS encoded CD, I cannot get audio out of the DVD player. Okay, well, here's, here's an interesting thing. DTS is a compression mode. It's, it's a way of manipulating high density signals. If your, if your device doesn't speak DTS, for example, your DVD player doesn't speak DTS, you can't use a DTS uh, a CD or DVD in that device. It won't work. Another interesting thing about DTS is that it must broadcast in the full spectrum of, uh, of home theater. In other words, at least a 5.1 system. You can't get your DTS to broadcast in just stereo. It doesn't work in just left and right stereo. So that's why if you're playing your DTS DVD out of your DVD player and trying to put it into your A bus distribution device, you have no stereo going into that distribution device. If you take another CD like your, your local uh, Little River Band CD or, or whatever your music of choice is and put that CD into your DVD player and broadcast stereo, then you'll be able to come out of your DVD player, left and right stereo, and go into your A-Bus and broadcast through the A-Bus technology. That's one of the problems with DTS, is it's a highly compressed, um, high-level high uh, compression language. It's very good for home theater. Again, if you have any questions, you can ask them now. Or if there's anything we don't get to today that pops into your head later on, you can always email them in. Appreciate your time and appreciate your, your patience with us. This is the first time CTEC has done this kind of an extensive webinar. If you have any questions or comments on this and would like to get it to the powers that be, please let us know. Type them into the, uh, the questions or, or chat box. Now we'll make sure it goes to the appropriate people. This, this material is only as good as you guys are. Um, we don't get it into the students. You do. Everything that we do would come to a screeching halt if you didn't do what you do. And we appreciate it uh, greatly. If we can do anything further, please let us know. And I think that's it for our first ever annual webinar. <laughs> yes, thank you very much.